<clears throat> Hello, nurses. This is Kevin with NursingCamp.com, and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus is on ACE inhibitors and ARBs, and ACE King High and Orthosartan. From my sticky note on ACE inhibitors and the ARBs. Okay, this is part of my cardiac ABCs, which I talked about previous lectures, where we do an assessment based on cardiac medications. And those cardiac medications are, you know, your acute meds, your beta blockers, we've covered in a previous lecture, calcium channel blockers, calcium glycosides, and then we have diuretics. Well, it's interesting that I put ACE inhibitors in diuretics because ACE inhibitors work on the renin-angiotensin system. And that deals with fluid in the, in the vessels. So it's outside the heart, and it works outside in, in the vasculature. And it's usually the first line, front line medication that is given to a patient, ACE inhibitors, before they're started on any kind of beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, or calcium glycoside. These are priority medications. However, you don't call the doctor up in the middle of the night for lisinopril. Um, that may, doesn't make it an acute medication. And ARBs are second line. And where if they don't tolerate an ACE inhibitor, they get put onto an ARB. And that is um, orthosartan. And we'll co cover that today. All right, so let's get into it. So ACE inhibitors. Um, ACE inhibitors aren't acute. You know, they are generally given front line. And after diet, exercise, and other methods are uh tried before they uh, started on blood pressure pills. And generally, they'll start on li lisinopril or uh, captopril or something like that. But the mnemonic for this is um, ACE King High in April. And ACE King High in April is um, things that we monitor for this medication, things that are acute for this medication, more specifically, angioedema. Angioedema is swelling of the face and and the person can't breathe, you know, so that person um, is at risk for airway. And so when you started on ACE inhibitors, you know, you monitor for angioedema and that's up to one year that this can happen. That also happens with um, ARBs as well. Um, the next is a cough. They get this no annoying cough, that um, histamine response. Or, and, but the main issue is that um, it's annoying and it's problematic for the patient. Um, it generally stops when they, um, when they stop the medication. But that means they can't tolerate olisinopril for whatever reason. And then they are generally switched to an ARB. Um, the next thing we monitor is a, where the, an ARB doesn't have this coughing problem. Uh, next thing we look at is electrolytes. And electrolytes, specifically uh, potassium. So we monitor for hyperkalemia and um, we look for cal uh, potassium high and signs and symptoms of potassium high, peak T waves. Um, peeing, puking, pooping, all those things. Um, and that's acute because cardiac arrest can happen from that. But, you know, it takes a long time, and but we do monitor for it. And the last thing is um, high in April. Um, high in April because of pril is acepril. So um, that's the class that it is, a suffix name of it. Another thing about ACE inhibitors is, um, you know, different types. Um, there's captopril, which I like to call, you know, crap to pril. And the reason I call that that is because it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And, um, and so you take this with food. Okay, and that, that should help with that crap to pril taste. All right, next thing is um, ARBs. ARBs are second line medications. They are given after, you know, an ACE inhibitor. So the way that this works is, is that ACE inhibitors work in the, the renin-angiotensin system. And that renin-angiotensin system is kind of like um, a person who's running up, a, running down a hill. Oh, I'm trying to run across somebody. And he's running down this hill, but with an ACE inhibitor, the, the angio-renin-angiotensin system, you're stopping this person from even going. 
Okay, so nothing is happening. So angiotensin one to two, um, you're stopping that whole process. You're saying, nope, not going to happen. And that's what an ACE inhibitor does, stops that system. Well, the interesting thing is, is that if the person is running down the hill in the renin-angiotensin system, and when they're running down this hill, um, that's what an ARB does. An ARB stops them midstream. So they've already started this system. They're starting to run an angiotensin 1 to 2. And what the ARB does is, is that it doesn't hit it right at the beginning. It stops it right there. So the momentum's already going. So it's called orthosartan. And orthosartan is like losartan. And that sartan is the end, end class suffix. And ortho is the major issue that we monitor for this patient. That's what we look for because that patient is at risk for orthostatic hypotension. And that's called 20, 20, 10. 20 systolic changes, uh, 20 diastolic changes, and heart rate 10. That's a sign of orthostatic hypotension. And so generally what we do for orthostatics for these patients is we give the ARB at nighttime. So before they lay down to bed and, um, and they go to sleep. So you give it to them so they don't fall on their face in the morning and, um, you know, hurt themselves. So orthostatics with ARBs, and that is acute. Um, another thing, too, is about with um, ACE inhibitors and uh, ARBs is the pregnancy classes D. Um, and remember that... Uh, a patient um, who is on lithium and NSAIDs with um, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, it lessens the effect of them. So it's very important to look at that. So the end result is, is that ACE inhibitors are a second-line, front-line medication. And when we're looking at um, a whales. We'll look at this real quickly. It's a, it's a chronic medication. We decide how it works. Run an angiotensin system. When do we hold a high potassium angioedema cough electrolytes? Um, assessment is for those signs and symptoms. Labs attributed are potassium. Anything to eat? Well, craptopril gives a bad taste in the mouth. You can take it with food. And what stands out? That it's not an acute medication. That ACE inhibitors can be switched from ACEs to ARBs. And that patients will generally be started on ACEs first, then ARBs second. So if you see a patient who's on ARBs, angiotensin 2 blockers, um, they've already been through this cycle. So nobody is usually started on an ARB first. And you always monitor for orthostatic hypotension. Well, my name's Camp and uh, with Nursing Camp, and you can see me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and my products are on Etsy, but you can also get them uh, free with uh, membership to uh, nursingcamp.com. And that's it for me for tonight. Uh, nurse on, and remember, anyone can be that nurse, but only people who can be that nurse. Enough of that. Obviously, it's nighttime. Uh, talk to you soon.